Hello and welcome to part 3 of my Xbox slash Xbox 360 collection. Uh, next up we have uh, Me the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Now this was a series that I've played pretty much since um, the original on the PS1. Um, I played two like a year after it came out because um, initially I was just like I, you sort of heard about what happened after the the demo and it's just like really they did that and it sort of upset me so I thought oh, I'm just not going to bother but then I sort of played it and it's, um, it's still a good game but I don't know why they put this it just felt whether they, you had to play as a fucking she-male for like that, almost the entire game and uh, he was oh and his conversation with his f fucking girlfriend <laughs> it's just like oh would you please just shut the fuck up and stop and just play <laughs> let me play the game um but yeah then i played the number three and it just sort of it it sort of took all the things that went wrong with this one and just it just felt perfect to me, this game. The the game, the level design, the um, the inclusion of uh, camouflage, which for me it was ahead of its time. I said that back then. I say that now. Um, the sort of variety of characters, the um, the fight sequences, the um, the action sequences, um, the overall story, and the sort of the the um, the ending, which um, for me was a very sort of emotional, sort of tear jerking ending, where you were just like, "Wow, I have to really do this," and um, yeah, just o overall, it was just one of those genre defining games which only comes along like once every five to ten years and for me it still hasn't a game like this still hasn't been topped for me um, and Peace Walker which I never played because I had a PSP but um, at the time there were no games for it <laughs> and um, eventually I was just like screw it I'll just get rid of it but then like games like this came out it was just like well, you're a little bit late, you know. <laughs> like, if had you come out at launch, or maybe like at least a year after launch, then maybe people would have bothered with the PlayStation Portable. But um, yeah, yeah it's one of those things, I guess. But um, I haven't played it yet, so I have no opinion of it. But um, I hear it's quite good. Uh, next up is another underrated game. Probably one of my favourite games from last year, and that is uh, Driver San Francisco. I I'm just begging people to just buy this game, please, <laughs> please buy this game because it's so good. It's just like a f think, think, um, think Life on Mars or Ashes to Ashes, if you know what I'm talking about. Especially if you're from the UK, and um, or Quantum Leap or something like that, and think think almost like a game of that, and that's what this is. Um, basically, Tanner starts off. Um, he sort of he sort of getting chased by Jericho, who's um, managed to escape from uh, prison and one thing leads to another and like Tano ends up in a coma and um, but then he sort of wakes up behind the wheel where he started and he's sort of questioning whether what he's experiencing is real or not and there's a lot of um there's a really cool feature where you can sort of shift into other cars 
and that will lead to um, side missions and mini games and the abilities to uh, do uh, these sort of side things called like dares where you sort of power slide a certain number of feet or do like a really high jump off like a ramp um, but yeah the multiplayer is just superb as well as so many different like game modes like capture the flag um standard like races um trailblazer which is kind of interesting you sort of go behind a car and you have to sort of um get as much of the trailblazing as possible um there's a lot of team modes like checkpoint races things like that um and yeah, it's over. It's just one of the best games I've played this generation, and no one bought it. And I'm just, again, just begging people to please give this game a chance because you will not regret it, especially for the price it is now. Uh, next up, we have WWE 13. Now, my interest in wrestling has kind of um, decreased over the last decade or so but um i still sort of follow the games a little bit just to see how much they've improved since the ps2 era and for the most part not that much but um i bought 12 earlier this year well uh, very early this year because um i was told it was pretty decent and um, you know what it was and uh, so I decided to uh, give this game a chance and it's probably the best wrestling game I've played since Smackdown Here Comes the Pain and that is a very high praise indeed because that game was more or less one of the best wrestling games of all time and uh, yeah yeah fantastic story you sort of play for the attitude era and for someone like me who grew up watching that particular era, like it's really cool when um, they set up the matches and they go for like the backstory, and you 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 sort of like yeah, I remember that. That was really interesting at the time. Um, and the multiplayer is it's it's better than last year because the servers from Dota 12 were pretty much non-existent because they never worked <laughs> you try and even go to like the character creations um, menu and it would just constantly load and not load up properly so um, but yeah they you the loading is significantly worse um, you do actually manage to get into like menus and stuff the um, the sort of ranked online is yeah it's not amazing it sort of lags a little bit occasionally but um but it's this is a great game to play with friends either um on your on your sofa or online especially like ladder matches because they <laughs> like you can do some really sort of funny like the more players the better uh next up we have borderlands 2 oh the um got this a lot so I got the premium club like additional content and stuff um, yeah a lot of very much improved from the first game in terms of like story um, and the graphics look even better the sort of the first one looked too sort of brown and gray in places for me but um, this this one they sort of really sort of went all out with like color and stuff it sort of it feels like a very sort of much more soul shaded game like um Zelda Wind Waker for example um my only complaint is like they used they were there was too many slow snow levels so there was a lot of uh of the levels which were like sort of lightish blue white colors and it sort of it just got old real fast when you kept going to like these. I was like, oh yeah, it's now a snow level. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. One of the best games this year. The only other complaint I have is um, 
I was one of the unlucky people who suffered the uh, badass rank being reset and that kind of it kind of stopped me from playing this because um, I would play with my friends who had sort of fully leveled up and um, I always felt like I was holding everyone back and it sort of hindered my interest in sort of playing more than I would have done had that not happened. Uh, next up we have Dead Rising. One of the one of the first 360 games I picked up. Um, now initially with this game I got really frustrated and fed up with it. Um, there were certain sections where you would if you didn't know what to do and where to go at first you you would die <laughs> pretty much because um, you go like somewhere at a certain time and then like a cutscene would hit in and you just like um, what the hell's going on and then you realise it's a, a, a boss battle and you're just like oh shit I don't have any weapons on me but um yeah, once you play through it a couple of times, just to sort of level, just like level up and sort of know the layout and the the uh, schedule of what's gonna kick in, like like who's gonna be like at the at that certain part of the mall in that certain time. Once once you know the layout of the game, it becomes so much more fun. And even if you don't do like the main story, you can just like lark about and just um, put like uh, robot hats on zombies and stuff, which is always hilarious. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Dead Rising Two off the record. Uh, I pretty much talked about the original Dead Rising in Dead Rising Two in my uh, PS3 collection, so um, yeah, I'll just talk about this one. Um, is it a cheap sort of cash in? Yes, um, but I like the fact they improved the uh, the online co-op in this game because every time you saved in Dead Rising Two, from the 360 version I played anyway, um, your your co-op partner would be uh, kicked out every time you save. So um, yeah, they have sorted that out in this one. Um, I love the uh, playground as well, where you, or the sandbox uh, part of this game where you can pretty much ignore the story entirely and just um, do challenges and stuff like that and just generally sort of lock about really. I thought that was a nice feature. <sighs> oh god. <laughs> Dark Souls. Yes. Um, now, don't get me wrong. It's a good game, but I think the rules that are set, in, the rules that from software set in this game were very harsh. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. It's not necessarily a hard game. It's just a game that requires a, a hell of a lot of patience. And I don't have a lot of patience, so for me, this uh, is definitely not my kind of game. I'm still going to keep plugging away at it and see if I can, by some miracle, try and complete the game. But I, I doubt it. It's, it's again, it's not a bad game. It's just not my type. Uh, next up we have Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. This is why I don't have the Xbox version of Halo, the original Halo. Um, but yeah, a really, you know, a decent, a decent reboot. I thought it was kind of interesting where you, you have the feature where you press the back button and you can have the original graphics. Um, and you do that and you're like, oh my eyes. <laughs> but um yeah, and it's, my only complaint is like only two player co op, which is a shame because a lot of the recent Halo games have been four player. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a it's kind of a bummer, but 
other than that, it's a fantastic game that's been, um, you know, refreshed to the um, current generation, I guess. And lo last up for this part, I'm um, going to talk about one of my my all-time favourite game of this generation so far, at least, and that is Bioshock. This was the reason I picked up an Xbox 360, because at the time it was an exclusive. I mean, mind you, a year later it did get um, released on PS3, but I couldn't, I wasn't prepared to wait that long, and boy did I make the right decision. This game is, it, it just feels perfect to me when, like, I, this could be like nostalgia, but I don't care, I, I felt this, the the gameplay, the story, the graphics, the audio in particular was just fucking superb. Um, I have the seal book, by the way. Uh, I'll just open up. For you. There you go. But yeah, if you have not played this game, my first question will be, where have you been? <laughs> and second of all I would strongly advise you to play this on anything be it 360, PS3, PC, whatever just play this game because it's it's one of those games that sort of set the the benchmark the benchmark for um, a lot of games you see now like Dishonored and um Stuff like Deus Ex Human Revolution to a point. Um, and yeah, I, I just the, the, the whole moral compass where you can sort of be good or be a bastard or be a little bit mix of both, you know, it's just. For me, for me I, I just fell in love with the game from the start and it still holds up today along with the the very best from this year so yeah this that's it for this part and stay tuned for the final part uh part four see you again soon